The 2025 F1 season is looking like the year of the rookies. Haas's Oliver Behrman is likely to be joined by Mercedes Andrea Kimi Antonelli. There is still an open seat at VCAR, but which Liam Lawson is likely to fill. And now, all indications are pointing to Alpine, giving another promising youngster a shot. 2024 was the first ever F1 season to feature the exact same driver lineup as a previous year, so to see so many new faces coming into the sport is incredibly exciting. But while Alpine might be making some exciting changes to their driver lineup, things behind the scenes are far from happy. A third new team principal in 12 months could find themselves facing a factory strike amid rumors of closures and sales. Today, I'll check out Alpine's F1 lineup for 2025 and fill you in on the chaos behind the scenes. So, don't go anywhere. A French F1 team with an all-French driver lineup was an exciting idea when it was announced that Esteban Ocon and Pierre Gasly would be driving together in 2023. What was exciting on paper turned out to be anything but on track. Though, the drivers are hardly to blame for that. After five seasons for driving for Renault and then Alpine, the team decided not to renew Esteban Ocon's contract for 2025 earlier on this year, giving him plenty of time to find a new seat. With a race win in 2021 and a podium finish in Monaco and plenty of points finishes on his resume, it was unlikely that Ocon wasn't going to find a seat for 2025. He'll be lining up alongside rookie Oliver Behrman at Haas next season. Who will take his place at Alpine has been a big question mark, though. While Carlos Sainz was still an option, Alpine didn't want to make a decision in case they could tempt the current Ferrari driver to join them. But with all the off-track problems at the team at the moment, especially in their engine department, Sainz decided that Williams would be a safer bet. More on those engine issues and a potential strike shortly. With Sainz out of the picture, Alpine are eager to make their decision regarding their driver lineup. A number of outlets are reporting that Jack Doohan will put pen to paper in the coming days to confirm himself as Pierre Gasly's teammate for next season. Doohan has been a contender for a 2025 Alpine seat for a while, but has faced an uncertain few weeks with new F1 team advisor Flavio Briatore having made a pitch for signs. Had the Spanish driver accepted, then the door would have been closed for Doohan, who appeared to have no other options to make the step up to F1. But Sainz's decision to go elsewhere, on top of ongoing promise that Doohan has shown driving F1 machinery, has left the team confident the Australian is the right man to get a race seat. He has also competed in six FP1 sessions for the Alpine team in Mexico, Abu Dhabi, Canada and Silverstone, and has been testing an A524 car at Spa this week for a Pirelli tyre test. Flavio Briatore being Doohan's manager hasn't done his case any harm, with the controversial ex-team principal apparently now calling the shots from a distance at Alpine. Doohan's chances were also helped by the arrival of new team principal Oliver Oakes, who he has raced for in the past at High Tech in F3 Asia. With Alpine announcing that Bruno Famine would be stepping down as team principal at the Belgian Grand Prix last weekend, a year on from Otmar Safnauer's sacking, Oliver Oakes has been brought in to take his place. After competing in karting and single-seater racing in the 2000s, where he was a member of the Red Bull Young Driver program, Oakes moved into management and founded High Tech Grand Prix, a team that competes in Formula 2 and Formula 3 in 2015. At 36 years old, the Briton becomes the second youngest team principal in Formula 1 history. I'm extremely grateful to Luca De Meo, the Renault Group CEO, and Flavio Briatore for this opportunity to lead BWT Alpine F1 team back to competitiveness," said Oakes. The team has talented people and excellent resources at its core, and I'm confident that we can accomplish a great deal together during the remainder of this season and the longer term. I look forward to getting started after the summer break. Oakes is not stepping into an easy role. In fact, being a team principal at Alpine is probably the hardest job in F1 at the moment. The constant chopping and changing of the management structure and personnel has made a massive impact on the team's competitiveness. Having finished fourth in the Constructors' Championship in the first season of the new technical regulations, the team have slipped to eighth at the moment and look out of touch of Haas and VCarb ahead of them. Their old rivals Aston Martin and McLaren have found huge improvements in the last few years as well, which has highlighted the failures of the French side further. Their competitive struggles are only the start of their problems, though. In 2026, Formula One will see its engines overhauled, with a larger electrical component and sustainable fuels being introduced. Each engine supplier has been hard at work over the last few years, designing and testing engines, 
some with more success than others. While testing data from the factories is secret, Renault, who supply Alpine's engines from their very factory, are reportedly struggling. With rising costs and a lack of promise, Renault CEO Luca De Meo is exploring the option of shutting down the project and becoming a Mercedes customer instead. Looking back at the last 10 years, it's easy to understand the lack of faith in the F1 team. Together with Red Bull, they swept the final championships of the V8 era, but the arrival of the V6 hybrid turbos brought that to a sudden halt. Red Bull eventually ditched them for Honda due to a lack of performance and reliability. Renault then revived its works team as no one wanted to buy their engines, but aside from a single win in Hungary three years ago, has enjoyed little success since. The team have said that the decision to potentially stop the F1 engine project is because the Alpine brand needs the resources that are being devoted to the project elsewhere. Speaking before the Belgian Grand Prix, ex-team principal Bruno Famine said, The Alpine brand is developing, has a huge, huge project of development, with seven new models in the coming years with high-end technology. It's very, very ambitious to build this new sporting brand and to make it known outside of France, everywhere in the world. The project, which has been presented at the beginning of the week to the staff representative in Viry Chatillon, is to reallocate the resources from one side to another, one side being the development of the Formula One power unit, which is being made in Viry, to dedicate those resources and skills to developing new technologies for the brand, for the new products of the brand. Building an F1 engine is a massive expense, and with no teams interested in purchasing Alpine engines, the project will be costing the brand far more than it's worth. Mercedes dominated the sport after the last power unit change in 2014, and many expect them to find an early edge again in 2026. While the decision to stop the project and switch to a Mercedes engine appears sensible enough, the team in Viri are not happy. With communication from team management to the factory reportedly being poor, staff have been reading the rumors in the press and are angry. Liquip and other outlets are reporting that the decision to stop the 2026 engine project will leave 350 team members jobless. This decision has sparked a strong reaction among employees, and Liquip quoted one employee of the team as saying they'll go on strike if the plan goes ahead. Potentially, we might not start the cars, the employee said. As well as the potential for the strike, the union, who represent the workers at Viri, said a large number of them had gone on sick leave, leaving the factory short on staff. While the excitement of a new young team principal and the addition of another rookie to the F1 grid may be big positives, a dark cloud still hangs over the Alpine team. With all of the changes happening at the team, talk of a sale has only increased. Andretti are obviously mentioned regularly, but with Oliver Oakes now at the team, a potential sale to Hitech is also up for discussion. Hitech was one of the companies who applied to join the F1 grid as a new team through the FIA's Expression of Interest program a few years ago. Then there's also a new US F1 project that Otmar Safnauer has joined, which is backed by some big American investors. For Duan and Oakes, life at Alpine isn't going to be an easy introduction to F1. What do you think of Alpine's driver lineup for next season? And do you think a sale of the team could really happen? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below and until next time, drive safe and bye for now.